now. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever in the world you are. Welcome to our special breakout show with me, Lillian Obogo of the Shine Out Loud show. And I am blessed to have the two ladies who make up part of Soulful Women. And these women are just fantastic because their motto is about excellence, brand excellence in black businesses. And they've created a platform to showcase black businesses in a way that says we're here, we're excellent, and we're not going anywhere. And I have Zara and Alicia join me today who make up two of the partners and we are missing the third partner who can't make it today. Hello, ladies. Hi. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> All right. So let's let's jump in, and I will allow you because I you know have the introductions ready, but I will allow you to tell me what actually brought three of you together today to start Soulful Ladies. And I used to say three of you because there are three of you. So yeah. uh, Alicia, do you want to introduce your partners and tell us what brought you to Soulful Ladies? Um, it's Linda, sorry. Oh, I am so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Alicia's the one missing. <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, so um, I'm Rosara. <laughs> and um, yeah, we're the part, we're part of Soulful. And what inspired us to set up Soulful was the gap that we saw between customers' awareness of black owned businesses that are actively out there and within their reach. Um, and so we were inspired to kind of create a platform that brought the two together and illuminated the black experts, the black businesses, the black entrepreneurs that were out there and, um, and thriving. Okay. And, you know, we keep talking about black businesses, especially the, there seems to be a throw of black businesses coming forward at the moment. When you consider what black excellence means, you know, we have so many different phrases from black girl magic to black excellence, yeah. black this, black that. What does excellence mean to you? And why do we need to really start cultivating our own excellence? Zara, I'm going to give that question to you. Well, basically, it's just about the great stuff that we're doing, things that are encouraging, especially our younger generations to now follow examples of being um, an influential person, somebody that you can look up to, and just it's all things that are great within the black community. It's great to have businesses, it's great to be successful, it's great to have an income coming in that you generate yourself, but it's also good to have these things shown to the younger generation so that they can feel like, I can do that, um, I can be the next big thing. And there's so much stuff out there that people just don't know about. So it's just to expose everyone to and also to encourage good economics. Okay, so it's about, it's not just about let's own the business, it's about creating yeah. an education for the younger ones behind yeah, this. Exactly. It's about saying we can actually create with our own hands money that sustain us. And, mm -hmm. you know, we are in that fold. If you look at the Brexit that has happened, if you look at the United States, why is this important? Why? do we need to continue to have these conversations? Because you will think that by now, we should be already on board with this, but we find ourselves in a position that we need to have these conversations more and more. Definitely. I, 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 sorry, so I tend to say it's like, not just going through the door, but leaving it propped open for those behind us. Okay. I think, it needs to be discussed because there's always some kind of stumbling block or it would be that there's always some kind of stumbling block whether it means that people are it's just say great things are going on alongside that there's some there's always some kind of publicist or mm -hmm. showing like the worst things going on the youth killing each other the police like it's just there's always something that kind of counteracts yeah the great stuff that's going, going on, on and people pay more attention to the negative. So it's about pushing those positive things out there. So yeah. that's what people focus on more. And showing the excellence that we are achieving. Yeah. Okay, you know, and that's very important because, you know, your, your wives, your partners, your mothers, you are looking at this not just about 
this is about me right now. This is not just about us. This is you're creating a platform that showcase businesses in a way that your slogan that got my attention was about in a way that is non-competitive. Yeah. Mm. And so that so. actually got my attention for a couple of reasons. I point that to Linda, could you kind of move to the you, my it's way? Like, yeah, just because you were so much in the, the light. So I'm losing I'm part really of your lovely face. Yes, yeah, that's better. That's better. Thank you so much. So, you know, the reason why that actually struck a chord, because when we talk about businesses, we've been taught that to be an entrepreneur, you got to hustle, you got to do this, you got to be this way, you, gotta, you know, you got to beat to the top and, you know, mm. leave other people behind you. And yet, yet we also give prizes to people who are athletes who actually compete. So your slogan about non-competitive building of businesses, why did you take that stance? Who's that? Okay. So <laughs> we can both, I'm, I'm going to this is for both of you. Yeah. <laughs> I can just stay on it. Um, I believe that you thrive better. And not to say that competition is not healthy, mm -hmm. but support is a much better tool so when we support each other and build each other without the feeling of oh I've done something wrong that means I'm, I'm failing um or this person's, or this better, person's than better than me or look over there she's achieving it I'm just I, I can't even you know you get deterred and in our community we have so much of that already. As, a, as a already let's celebrate supporting and building each other where we don't feel that we're competing where we feel to be ourselves and when you are yourself you are more creative and you're able to create what's within rather than looking outside not Sorry. just that alone <laughs> it's, it's also to help business network yes so like there could be one small business that's successful in one area and another small business that's successful in another area and they both need help in the areas that they're not so successful in so that they can come together and share yeah and it's all about networking and how are you doing that? Because I find, I find that hard. So could you, and it's all about all the businesses getting together. And even if their products are similar, that's a good idea. Do you mind sharing how you got to that point? It's just all about networking, all about sharing, all about coming together and trying to build each other up so that everybody is at a stage where it's success, all success. It's all success. Successful. and you don't feel like someone's stealing your idea or doing everything yeah. we're supporting each other yeah and we're, we're not in fear but we're in in in, in with united united unity yeah, yeah. I, I, the asians and the jews do they, they, they don't usually understand so we need to adopt that yeah adopt that you know, I'm ab absolutely all for that because there is an importance of growing together. There's an importance, serious importance of building together. And the fact mm -hmm. is that your business as it stands without even looking at what you do for other businesses is already breaking a few stereotypes because mm -hmm. the first stereotype is, well, black women don't work together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Black women can't be successful together. Mm. Oh, and then if you want to throw in the shadism conversation into that, there's all of that. So mm. I am all for what you ladies stand for. Because, yes, competition is great. Competition mm. is necessary because it moves business forward. However, we go faster together. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's something that if we keep reminding ourselves that we grow faster together with others, because like you rightly pointed out, what I may know, you don't. What you may know, I don't. And mm -hmm. if we share within each other, we grow. That's, exactly. really, that's really that simple. And um, uh, um, Alicia, you mentioned something and you said, um, sorry, Linda, you mentioned something and you said about, you know, where we, let me let me get that phrase right oh but you're stealing my idea or it's it was my idea first and mm -hmm. when we think about it there actually isn't any original idea on the no factory. there isn't not on the sun exactly there, there hasn't there, there ha i don't think there has been an original idea since the first painting the first will or the first um uh, social media. First everything right. <laughs> and let's <laughs> literally invent something brand new never been thought of before. it's already done yeah. there's just exactly. new ways of, of doing, doing it. it 
exactly personal touch to it mm. but <laughs> the, like you said it is already been done so it's not a case of stealing that idea it's how can i personalize it to myself yeah and once you know the the main reason to why you're producing something the creativity is endless it and it flows and it, if you have a baseline a principle of why you're doing an idea running with a uh a, a, a business yeah possibilities are endless you know what? I like this. And I like the fact that your platform is actually out there to say, listen, they are black businesses that are successful and are here to stay. So looking at your platform, looking at what you've done so far, let's look at you ladies personally. Now, what are your individual backgrounds? So you then wake up and start a business. You have day jobs. You have what you do. You've what you've done. What is yeah. in all that you've done? What it would you say is the defining thing that brought you to where you are today? And that's for both of you. I think just wanting to not just, you, you want to give back, but sometimes everybody has different ways of giving back. Some people give back with like physical or monetary or gifting and that. And some people give things with wisdom. And it, I think with this is more of like an idea that like, how do we give back? Plus we are all mothers. We all have children. And we don't want our children to make the same choices that we made when we might have been younger. And it's only now we're thinking, okay, so what are we doing? Where are we going? How are we building ourselves as women? We would like our children to have that kind of, that implanted in them already. Like, so they grow into it. It's not something they have to figure out later on. So I think for us, it was more about giving back to the young generation. I, I, I feel like our generation, the generation older, is a lot harder to reach. They're already stuck in their way. Hmm. So, you know, it, it, there are people that are open-minded and see that there is a future where we can build together and be economically rich, emotionally rich, mentally rich as a, as a community, as a whole. But I think it's more so for the children coming up behind us. And that, for me, is what's important, is that the children are going to grow up to be these type of adults that are going to feed into their community and have the businesses and I'm here itching. Building. <laughs> <laughs> I, so love it. I just want to compliment what she said and say that that's why we're soulful. We want to sow a seed. We want mm. to be generational. Mm. That's why we are called soulful. Sow a seed so it's generational. So the platform, it highlights those businesses. It gives those businesses that seem like they would have illuminate, like, illuminate them show them just like if you're starting out as a business you, you it's excellent this is this is magnificent what you're offering and show them believe in yourself and that's mm. what soulful is about so, in the so that generations to come have an easier not even just an easier but a, a, they an access they, they have accessibility yeah. actually you know what i think easier is not a bad word because we tend to avoid to say, oh, we don't want to make it easy for them, our next generation. But I think, it's, I think, I think the onus is on us to make it easier. Not, That's not, okay. yes. not, not, not easier in the sense of they don't have to, work, they don't have to get up and create, but mm -hmm. easier for them to walk through those doors. Yeah. We yeah, want exactly. to put our yeah. next generation in the position that is easier for them to connect and network with people yeah. like-minded exactly. to support exactly. their visions. Yes. So yes. there's nothing wrong with the word easier. I think, mm -hmm. I think we should embrace the easier for our next generation. The yeah. same way that the culmination of our parents' dreams for us was it was easier for us to be in places they couldn't be. Exactly. It, no, it, it's, that's the truth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. You know, I agree 100%. You know, so, so yeah, so I, you know, and Linda, I'm going to ask you a question. Looking yeah. back at your past, looking at, you know, if you look over your shoulder to your 18 year old self, what is the first thing you will say to your 18 year old self about the journey that she's going to go on? <laughs> I would say to my 18 year old self, Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. No matter what is going on, do not lose belief in your in yourself. And 
strive for the best because you deserve the best. Mm -hmm. Strive for the best, even when it seems like it's inaccess inaccessible, inaccessible, still make the effort to try and go for it because the worst thing that you can do is not make the attempt and failure is not the end okay it's actually a chance for you to restructure rebuild mm -hmm. and go again okay that is absolutely awesome zara my question for you is something linda just spoke about failure how do you personally as a mother as a partner as a business owner how do you personally bounce back from failure I mean, I'm very, failure doesn't scare me because I just think it's, it, it happens. Hmm. You, can't, you can't think that everything's going to always go the way you want it to. Things are going to happen. There's always going to be a barrier, it's an obstacle. It's about, as Linda said, restructuring, thinking, okay, this has happened now. What's my next move? What can I do now to move on? How am I going to now progress or how do I make a decision that's going to, not make me end up in that same predicament again so it's failure isn't it's not a scary thing it's a daunting but it's yeah it is it's an opportunity it, it's that point in your life to say okay now i tried right maybe i should try left i tried left maybe i should go straight and it, you have to try really. yeah you don't try yeah. you're always going to be stagnant sitting in the same place thinking about it oh should I oh I'm just gonna sit here a little bit longer <laughs> <laughs> oh you might take that right again oh no it's, it's so you just have to do it and you have to know that things aren't always gonna happen the way you want them to things are gonna go upside down things may even be delayed yeah so, but as long as you have that focus. motivation yeah. yeah and focus the push Everything that you're supposed to do, everything that's supposed to happen, will happen as long as you're willing to keep on pushing and keep on moving and keep on going. You know what? That's absolutely so spot on. And but it's like sometimes we forget. We forget that, you know, failure is part of our growing process. We forget. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and so sometimes it does, it does, it does kind of stump us. And if you've ever had a stumping moment what mm. do you do to recover so and this, this is this is for both of you if you've ever had a stumping moment where you've had that little bit of failure and it made you go <gasps> yeah it can oh. be painful very how 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 do you <laughs> failure can be painful yes how do you recover sometimes i mean for me addressing that question um there is sometimes a moment of silence mm. And you have to be at peace with yourself, with your thoughts. Because sometimes when we fail, I tend to in the past failed and quickly, because failure is seen like, oh, you've done, you know, you, you haven't made it, you failed. Mm -hmm. You make the decision in haste yeah. that are wrong. Yeah. And so then because you want to cover up the failure, you then go to extremes that are not right for right. you, per mm -hmm. se. So I would say, Sometimes when failure comes, you need to be at peace with yourself. Get a notepad, get some motivational speaking, whatever it may be yeah. that rejuvenates That's your nice thinking, thing. revitalizes your ideas, re, re, yeah. reinstates your productivity, your yeah. creativity, or whatever it is, because you've now been sucked dry, kind yeah. of, if you want to put it like that. So you need to put back in what has just been sucked away mm -hmm. because when you was going for that, you was passionate, mm -hmm. you was thriving and it's just been knocked and it's only human nature for you to feel a sense of loss. Mm -hmm. So then you need to rebuild your mind, rebuild your thinking, even if it's going to the gym and watch or in your listening to the thing, you have a eureka moment. You have your, you all of a sudden feel refreshed and rejuvenated mm -hmm. and it could be different for everybody. It could be, mm -hmm going on walks down the park it could be anything it could be just sitting in your room with a pen and notepad or just listening to whatever calms and soothes your mind or thinking mm. but you need that quiet time sometimes after failure just to kind of reevaluate and reinstate your thinking and mental state yeah <laughs> yes. 
And I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to put a pin in the next question I'm going to ask, because that question is really important because it's something you touched on. But what I wanted to ask is how can we find out more about SOFL? Where do we need to go on social media to make sure we connect with you ladies? So at the moment we have our Instagram page. It's so, wait, so underscore oh, full. Yeah. Yeah. So underscore full. Mm -hmm. We also have a Facebook page, but it mirrors our Instagram. And we have a website, which is so underscore full um, dot co dot uk, is it? Or is it dot com? Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. Yeah. Okay. And we have a page as well. Um, and Twitter. Oh, and our Twitter. Yeah. yeah. So full at so full one on Twitter. Okay, so what I'll do is for everyone who's listening um, in the recording, it will be on our website, all your links where you can go and connect with these amazing ladies and actually find out about the different businesses their platform supports. Now, mm -hmm. let's go back to that question that I was going to ask because you mm -hmm. actually said something that was very important about being sucked dry, about being having a, you need to refresh yourself. Now, it's a two part question, and I'm going to start with the part one especially for us as black women, we have been sold this um, Kool-Aid that I call it, that we need to be strong. You know, the strong black woman stereotype. We are strong. We don't need anything. Yeah. Everything's off our shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that strong stereotype. Tell yeah. Me, for you ladies, how do you view that story? about this strong at all cost that's how i view it it <laughs> doesn't work i mean for me oh sorry i'm not no, sure no. if i um i mean some people don't have anybody mm. but i am blessed to have these are my Lee shows this not here from another and stuff. zara who's here they're <laughs> my sisters and from mm. secondary school till now um, we've been, and this friendship's been going. Mm -hmm. And even besides them, sometimes, you know, I will be like, oh, I've got to be strong. I mean, I was. Yeah, if, I if, think if we they were retell we our characters. We're all, we're all like that. I'm we're all just like that. But as life gone on, it's a, it's a load of nonsense. Having a cry is the best, best thing, thing ever. ever. But you're made to think like, I you can't cry. Say, yeah. I'm not going to cry because if I cry, I'm weak. weak. And yeah. I can't be weak because if I'm weak, people are going to walk over, over me. me. And if people walk over me, that means I'm this. It's like literally, it's a list that goes on and, and on, on and on and on. And, on. <laughs> and you, you, you end up feeling like, you just end up being a really tough, hard exterior. And, and I've, to me personally, I've had experiences where I'm so like, you nobody can't hurt me that's not gonna upset me i've been through worse than that and i've come out the other end so whatever that people start looking at you like you're cold mm. and you're heartless and then you fit into a brand new stereotype that's mm -hmm. been created of this cold heartless person who doesn't care and then all of a sudden you start feeling to yourself like okay so i'm not allowed to cry i've got to be strong all the time but now that I'm not allowed to cry and I've got to be strong, I'm cold and I'm heartless mm. and I've got no feelings. Like, what do you want me to do? I could be left. Like, where, where am I supposed to go? Where do I fit in? So I, I think for women, it, it, like, you have to brush that off aside. It literally, you have to start going inside yourself and saying, I'm supposed to cry, actually. Everybody is human nature it makes it's got angry. nothing it does it builds up this it anger really if you does. don't really tears tears are a way i always say to speak to god but tears are a way to release stuff that you've conjured up inside and that's where the stereotype angry black woman, woman comes, comes from. from yeah but and it, yeah. it derives from the fact that you've demanded that i'm strong Strong. so it's like it's so contradicting because you've made a demand that I'm strong and I must hold up this and I must be this strong and independent and and then all of a sudden I'm angry. Exactly. So then it boomerangs to something else. Mm. It, but it yeah. does show in our generation that we have carried that. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. And it's something that kind of we yeah, we wanna show as women that it's okay to to cry and, and actually be feminine and not always strong. It's it's okay. Yeah. Those moments count as well mm. in your journey. Okay. 
Um, so now I have the other question, and this is the other question that I wanted to ask. How do you all three, and I know, you know, your third is not here. Yeah. You have mothers, you have day jobs, you have other responsibilities and obligations, and you have your business, which you are birthing together. Mm. How do you all take care of yourselves? How do you take care of your physical, emotional, and mental well-being? So we've actually got a date book tonight. tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Love it! It's been a while. It's been a while. And we've booked a girly meeting to have like a cocktails and, and just chill and, and catch up and hug each other. And I've missed you sort of thing because like you said, life happens. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you need that time. And you go to the gym. She's really oh, yeah. good. I'm really bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I yeah, because I do believe we're all different yeah. and we all have different kind of releases. For me, when I go gym, I feel re-energized. I feel like I've given something to, to myself and I've had me time. So I tend to kind of do that um, two to three days in a week. And if, if not, at least one day. Okay. Just so that I've given something to me, but that, that's, yeah. that's how, I, we tend to do it as yeah. well as like we if we do meetings we meet, we meet up, up then yeah. meetings have a chat oh we do conference calls oh yeah all three of us all on the phone <laughs> so I'll be calling I'll be calling Zara and then Alicia will call and be like hold on hold on let's join right, let's, let's merge the call, call. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest we do have a lot of one-to-one -one time with us and, and our children as well are very close so we do things with the kids and it's just juggling. I mean, sometimes it's so easy to get complacent. I'm not going to lie. It's very easy to think it's all too much. I can't take it all on. But then again, if you have to think about your vision and what's important and a priority for you in life and that now, although it seems like a lot, if you keep on pushing and striving for it, eventually it will become easy. Do you know what I mean? So it's about staying um, consistent and Creating yeah. time, okay. Okay. time for Prioritizing work, and creating time for the kids, mm. <laughs> for everything. Oh, yeah. You know what? I really and understanding, think. I think. Understanding each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. So you guys actually make a lot of time, and I absolutely love the fact that you guys already have a date in penciled in for tonight. Girly time. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. In a month. Absolutely. It has. <laughs> so here's my final question for today. Mm -hmm. What do you want? your personal legacy and soulful legacy to be and that's for both of you i would like soulful to be to leave a legacy that illuminates and brings light to businesses businesses that may seem like nobody can see me and black excellence and black overall. excellence overall yeah black businesses that you know businesses that you know I don't know how to say, but like you be a business and you just started out and you're like struggling and you've like, you come across soulful and it meets all those requirements that you were looking for. You don't feel so strained to, to compete. Um, although you know what your competition out there, cause you've done your market research as a business, yeah. but you don't feel in a, in a position where you're put out of your depth and you're able to thrive because mm. soulful offers those, uh, those facilities. For, yeah. for me, it's about opening the door for the next generation and um, making sure that our future has a future. So, yeah, that's hopefully. From a business minded. Yeah, what, we, what we'll end up leaving behind is, is something that is just a door opener that people can see that this is where we're at, this is what we have to offer, and it just grows and grows and grows and grows and grows. It doesn't stop. Okay. And investing and keeping money in your community yeah. is actually a positive thing. Yeah. A building thing. Something that will, that's something that is necessary. Necessary. Part of your rule when you go into business, I'm going to give to my community. Yeah. That's what we want to leave. Just like all the rest of the other communities. I've started a business. Okay, what's on my agenda with this business? One of it is to give to my community mm -hmm. yeah 
All right, those are very powerful legacies. And ladies, I cannot wish you more than the best in your mm -hmm. endeavors and the work that you do. And do keep up us posted on any events you have coming up anything that you we want us to we're not going to give a date yet but we hopefully have one in the near future all right so keep us posted we'll want to see it on our timelines and um, share with us and i will love to interview you ladies all three of you again yeah. so let's we'll, we'll make that work offline we'll, we'll we make this work but once again thank you so much for being on our breakout show and um thank you, thank you for having thank us, you for having us. Bye. 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 Bye.